So the last method of physical testing that we will study on this discussion to be able to have an information about the adequacy of material is the detection of fatigue cracks. Unlike most structural failure mechanisms, fatigue failure offers almost no warning. A fatigue crack spends about 95% of its life growing slowly, almost dormant, and as a barely visible hairline crack. So early detection is the key to prevent catastrophic structural failures. Once the crack passes the dormant period, it will develop rather rapidly, leaving little, little chance that bridge inspectors will detect it. So on any structure, uh, some of its components uh, experiences what we call fatigue cracks. So these fatigue cracks are usually the result when a certain structural component experiences what we call cyclic loading or a repeated loading. So because of that cyclic or repeated loading, the structural component experiences fatigue that will result to fatigue cracks. So these fatigue cracks are actually not easy to detect because fatigue failure, which is the result of fatigue cracks, are, uh, offers almost no warning because as I've, said, as I've mentioned, fatigue cracks are not easy to detect because fatigue cracks spends about 95% of its life growing slowly, almost dormant. So meaning uh, we cannot uh, have a signal to, to detect that there is already a fatigue crack that is being experienced by a structural component because usually it's barely a visible hairline crack. So we cannot detect it uh, immediately. And, as a, and as, a, as a result of that, if we cannot detect fatigue cracks immediately, they can grow uh, slowly uh, until such time that until it pass the dormant period wherein uh, it will uh, develop rather rapidly, leaving little chance that bridge inspectors will detect it. So we, uh, uh, if we cannot detect the fatigue cracks uh, immediately, uh, the result will be it will develop continuously until such time that it reaches a certain period wherein it will already develop rapidly and then will, re will result to the eventual failure of a particular component that experiences that fatigue cracks. So therefore, early detection of fatigue cracks uh, is important for us to, to prevent any sudden failure of our structural component, especially on bridge structures. Fatigue cracks should be inspected where stress concentrations or weld connections exist because most fatigue cracks are, be, are, are barely visible, special dye penetrant may be used to assist in visual inspections. So usually fatigue cracks uh, occurs on those locations of stress concentrations or weld connections. That's why in actual, we usually conduct a series of tests on weld connections, most especially to detect to early uh, to detect early fatigue cracks. So in actual in the industry, we we usually use a simple method of detecting fatigue cracks, such as the dye penetrant test. So the dye penetrant test uh, looks something like this. So if this is a crack, a fatigue crack that is located on a certain structural component. Uh, we can use dye penetrant test to uh, to detect this particular uh, crack here because usually these cracks are just hairline cracks that are barely visible with the naked eye, meaning 
we cannot easily see these cracks underneath a particular structural component, especially on the on the uh, connections of uh, uh, welds. We we cannot uh, easily see this fatigue cracks with our naked eye because there these are usually hair just a hairline crack. So to uh, to assist or to aid us on inspecting uh, or detecting fatigue cracks, we usually conduct dye penetrant tests wherein we spray a special uh, chemical or what we call the penetrant, usually color red, uh, on the surface where we want to detect the crack. And then after that, uh, we will leave the penetrant to dry there on the surface and then wash it with water until such time that the penetrants located on the surface of the uh, component will be washed away. And then a developer chemical uh, is also sprayed on the uh, surface of the structural component that we want to detect the fatigue crack until such time that the, the penetrant that penetrated the crack will, uh, will uh, show itself on the surface. So in actual, the dye penetrant or dye, dye penetration test uh, looks something like this. So we spray a red colored chemical called penetrant on the particular surface that we want to, where we want to detect fatigue cracks. And then again, uh, and, uh, we wash it with uh, water, we wash away the penetrants that are located on the surface, and then after that, we apply developer. And then until such time that the penetrants that penetrated the crack uh, uh, emerge on the surface of the uh, structural component. So one, one example of an actual result of dye penetrant test is this. So you can see here, a small portion here, you can see a uh, very thin hairline uh, crack that manifests that there is uh, an indication that a crack uh, already occurred on this particular part of the uh, welded connection that we have here. So that is one way to detect uh, cracks or fatigue cracks by the use of dye penetrant test. Again, in a dye penetrant test, we just spray a penetrant that will aid on the uh, visual inspection of the, uh, the crack that is present on our structural component, but are barely detectable or visible with the naked. Uh, that's why we need to, we need the assistance of the dye penetrant to, to 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 show the locations of the fatigue cracks. If fatigue cracks are suspected, other advanced methods such as X-ray, magnetic field disturbance, and ultrasonic tests can be used to detect any discontinuity in steel and thus detect fatigue cracks that might not be visible to naked eyes. So ultrasonic tests uh, look something like this. If you have a steel component here that has a discontinuity inside, meaning it has a cavity, there is a hole, say for example, inside the structural uh, component. And again, as we all know, uh, that particular cavity or hole can affect the strength of this steel component. So therefore, we have to detect early that there is uh, a cavity or a hole present on our steel component so that we can uh, do some preventive measures. So this is what an ultrasonic test uh, looks like. So what we do here is we apply a gel on the surface of the steel that we want to subject to ultrasonic test. And then we use a special device, which looks something like this, that sends sound waves or, or ultrasonic waves uh, along the steel member itself. So the waves will travel along the medium, along the 
still component and then every time it passes to uh, every time it passes a cavity it will reflect a deviation on the connected monitor screen here so as you can see here as the sound waves or ultrasonic waves travel along the medium or the steel every time it passes this cavity you can see here a corresponding uh, deviation on the uh, graph of the sound wave being reflected on the computer monitor. So in that way, we can detect that there is actually a discontinuity present inside the steel member. Therefore, it can it will uh, force us to to provide preventive measures or maintenance or rehabilitation measures just to ensure that this particular steel component will still have an adequate strength to to serve its intended purpose. So those are just some of the physical testing that we usually conduct before commencing to the design or construction of a particular project. Or in the case of a uh, in the case of an existing bridge, we usually conduct this testing, physical testing, to for us to provide to provide us an information about the present or current uh, performance or behavior of our structural component, of our bridge structure.